you, I know that you're going to be so supernaturally blessed in Jesus' mighty name. God wants to do something good in your life. He wants to do something miraculous in your life. God wants to do something that's going to turn your life around. Hallelujah. He wants to do the miraculous in your life today. So receive it today. God wants to do this in your life today. Hallelujah. So we just say welcome to each one. And those that are uh, not well, we think of Susan, that the Lord will just continue that healing in her body. And uh, also just our, our condolences go out to Brother Peter Colby, uh, who lost his son Wayne. We, you know, we were praying for Wayne. And friends, he was really, really battling. And uh, he had cancer in every, every part of his body. And he really was suffering. And so we just prayed. And God just undertook and took him home. And uh, God was in control of, of that. And Peter just asked if we could just extend our thanks to everybody for praying for Wayne. And friends, it's the most difficult time. Because family members weren't even able to be there with him. And so I just ask you to just keep the family in prayer. Let's just lift our hands to heaven. I'm going to pray and then we're going to read the scripture and then go into time of praise and worship. Father, just pray right now, Lord God, for those that are on the prayer list. Lord, maybe there's others that are here today that are needing a touch from you. I pray, Lord God, that you meet them right now at the point of their need. Touch and heal Susan, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, send your word and touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, I pray. Thank you, Lord God, and Lord, that you perform a miracle, Lord God, in her life. And I thank you, Father God, also for, for uh, the, the Colby family, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Peter and his family, Lord God, that are, Lord, at this time, Lord God, mourning the, the death of Wayne, Lord God. I pray, Father God, we know Wayne is... Uh, absent from this body and present with you now, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon that family, even now, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, just thank you right now, Lord God, for a, a time of praise and worship. Lord, have your perfect will and way. Move by your power and by your spirit, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Uh, your word says in Psalm 115, or 150, Lord God, praise the Lord. Uh, you encourage us, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Uh, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh, praise him with the lute and the harp. Uh, praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Uh, praise him with the stringed instruments and the flutes. Uh, praise him with the loud symbols, uh, praise him with the clashing symbols, uh, then everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Uh, let's praise the Lord here today. Uh, I pray for the mighty of his power and praise and worship. Have your perfect will and way, Lord God. Move by your power and by your spirit, I pray. Then for your anointing, then will break every yoke, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. I want you to turn around.
Randida babosha le ni katara babosha kara babanda. Linda anda la babosha da rebi kara babonda. Linda anda la babosha la la baisa la babonda la bahanda. Linda babushi kaba. Radi ador la babesele me. Magnify the Lord with me. O oh, magnify his name, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is great, for the Lord will never leave nor forsake us, for the Lord is true to his word. What I have said, I will do, says the Lord your God. For the Lord says, I will hold you in my righteous right hand, and I will deliver you. I'll protect you from the enemy's onslaught, sir. I'll deliver you, says the Lord your God. As a hen draws near, draw the chicks near, so I'll draw you under my feathers, says the Lord your God. He says, I am your protector. I am your one that will protect you and take you through to the end, says the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Give his praises from a grateful heart.
is the, the Preacher's Diary. The Preacher's Diary, um, Mandla and Norma Bungu, Norma G. Norma G, she, uh, she, she recorded it. So it is on the uh, website from the Highway Radio. It is called The Preacher's Diary. Um, sorry? The Facebook page, the Facebook page, sorry. And uh, go on there, you can see the whole interview. Three hours, friends, it was awesome. And uh, we were able to share our testimony and also the testimony of the church. And it was so beautiful, they were so gracious to even play my dad's one song. And uh, those that were listening were able to just rejoice with that. So, friends, go and have a look at that. And let it be a blessing. And uh, we, we are just wanting to see the word of the Lord spread far and wide. We want to see souls saved in every area. There was somebody from Addis Ababa yesterday that contacted me that they also heard it on, online. And so they were also blessed. Um, I think that's up North Africa, that side. So we give God praise. But friends, I want to minister to you today. And uh, I know that God's going to bless you as you receive the communion emblems that are being handed out. Now keep it with you until we get to the time of communion. But friends, I want to make this declaration as a declaration and also faith statement and also as a prophetic word. Hear this word today. Let our declaration and decree be the word of God is alive, a fire revealing and cutting. I write and decree these words in the mighty name of Jesus and in his authority and through his power. The angelic troops stand ready to dispatch these decrees to the heavenly realms, to the rulers and authorities, and to post in the king's palace. I decree and declare according to Jeremiah 23, 19 through to 32, the storm of the Lord is bursting out in fury. A whirling storm, whirling down upon the heads of the wicked. The Lord's anger will not abate, not abate until he fully accomplishes his purpose of his heart. In the last days, we are seeing this come to pass. Know that by the blood of the Lamb, there is grace now for all who call to come and to receive the salvation of the Lord. I decree and declare the false prophets of this day who speak their own words to tickle the ears of the hearers, then say, thus says the Lord, are being called out. God says, I did not send these prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to, the, to, to them, yet they prophesied. If they had been present at my council, they would let my people hear my words and turn from their evil way and the evil of their actions. I decree and declare, no one can hide from the Lord God Almighty. There's no place, no secret that he will not see, will not see him. For God fills heaven and earth. The Lord sees even uh, each one who is prophesying lies, who is prophesying the deceit of his own mind. Those prophets who pacify the listeners are causing them to forget the Lord. I decree and declare, the servants of Jesus Christ speak God's word faithfully. They do not speak their own mind and say it is God. Integrity before God and man is crucial. Only the truth will last. Anything else will be burned away in the fire. I decree and declare the word of the Lord is like fire, like a hammer shattering rocks. I decree and declare according to Jeremiah 33, 1 through to 3. The Lord, the maker, the Lord who formed the universe calls, calls out to me and I will answer you. I will tell you great things, hidden things of which you are unaware. Be, be first, but first you must call out to me. Lord, in Jesus' name I cry out to you to reveal the hidden things that I may do your perfect will and speak and write your words, your truths in these days. Uh, I decree and declare, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through to 16, the word of God is alive. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts through where the soul meets spirit and joints meets marrow. It is quick to judge the inner reflections and attitudes of the heart before God. Nothing created is hidden, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him. 
to whom we must render an account. I decree and declare Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is our great high priest who has passed through the highest heavens. So we will fall, hold firm to what we acknowledge as true. For our high priest emphasizes with our weaknesses and sympathizes with us since in every respect uh, he was tempted just as we are the only difference being he did not sin i decree and declare we confidently approach the throne from which god gives grace so that we can receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. I decree and declare according to Philippians 1, 9 through to 11, that your love will, be, will more and more overflow in fulfillment of knowledge and depth of discernment. So you are able to determine what is best and be pure and without blame for the day of Christ. You are filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Friends, in the day and age that we are living, we must keep our eyes firmly fixed upon the Lord. Can I have an amen on that? Do not look to man, look to God. Our answers are all found in the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It is, it, it is of no personal interpretation. It is led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to us and we must be led by God's Word. Friends, the message today is build your life with and in the Word of God. Those that are listening online, I pray that you have your Bible with you. Those that are here in the sanctuary, have your Bible. Open up your Bible and get to the scriptures that I'm going to turn to today. And I want you to turn to 1 Peter 1 verse 23 and 25. God's Word is powerful. God's Word changes lives. God's Word will feed your life. I pray, Lord God, that as I minister your Word here today, hearts and lives will be changed, will be challenged, I pray. Holy Spirit, speak into our lives, I pray. Have your perfect will and way, I pray. Move by your power and by your Spirit here today, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. 1 Peter 1 verse 23 and 25 it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord endures forever. Can you say that out loud? The word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Amen? When we, when we look at Acts chapter 20 verse 32, it says, yes, So now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace. Always go back to the Word of God. Always go to the Word of grace. Stay with what God's Word says. I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. God's Word will build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. We see the story in the Bible in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And I'd like you to turn to this because it's where we're going to be dealing with today. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through to 49 says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord? There are many that are saying, Lord, Lord. But when God speaks to us, we never listen. He says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you do not do the things which I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. The Lord will always show you who he wants you to be. The one that hears the word and does the word is like, verse 48 says, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. 
Where did he lay his foundation? On the rock. And when the floods arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. It was founded on the rock. But, always look when it has a but. He who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth or on the sand without a foundation. There are many friends that are in life that are going through life without any foundation. No substance to their life. They built without a foundation and against which the streams, when the storms came, beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. You see, Christianity is an exciting life. Christianity is exciting. It's a life of victory through the Word. You see, friends, when you base your, your faith and your walk and your Christianity on what God's Word says, you've got nothing to worry about. It's when you base it on something else that somebody else has said and you can't remember what they said and you're thinking, what was that foundation again? And you've got nothing. It's like, it will blow you over. Base it on the Word of God. Is your life based on God's Word? Amen? It must be based on God's Word. Young people, base your life on God's Word. You see, friends, there are so many... The Bible says there's those that are listening to those things that will tickle the ears. I could stand here and I could tickle your ears, but you're not going to hear that from me. I'm going to preach the Word of God to you. Because this is our basis. This is our foundation. This is what God wants you to hear. Lorna was challenged yesterday if you were listening. And the question came to her, but if you don't say all of these nice things, then the younger generation might not come to your church. She said, I will only preach and speak what the Word of God says. That's what you're going to hear in this church, is the Word of God. We're not here to be the popular. We're here to be a mouthpiece for God. We're here to speak the Word of God. Not that we don't want the young people. But they must listen to the Word of God. That's what's going to change their life. That's what's going to change your life. That's what's going to keep you on the straight and the narrow. Is the Word of God. You can't go preach a, a preach that's going to tickle the ears and lead them down to a path of hell. Preach a message that's going to challenge them and bring them onto a path leading to eternal life. The Bible says that the storms came and immediately it fell because it had no foundation. You see, true Christianity, true Christians don't need to struggle to please God because the Holy Spirit helps them to live the faith life that pleases God. When you're living a life that pleases God, you don't have to worry. You do not have to fear. All you have to do is you've got to pay attention to what God's Word says and follow His Word. Obey His Word. Live in His Word. Live by what His Word says. When you live according to the Word, you won't need to keep watching your life to know whether or not you are pleasing God because the Bible says, Hebrews 11 verse 6, it takes faith to please Him. When you can operate in faith, you're pleasing God. Wave at your neighbor and say, I'm pleasing God because I'm living by faith. Hallelujah. Faith is acting on the word. What God's word says, we must do. See, the Lord Jesus described for us the life and the wisdom of the one who acts on God's word. Tap yourself on the shoulder and say, I'm going to start acting upon the word of God. Jesus described for us, and the Master said this in Luke chapter 6, verse 48, he says, He is like a man which built 
a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You see, when life is calm, our foundations don't seem to matter much. How many of you know that? When everything's all calm, wow, the sun's out, it's so exciting. Woohoo! <laughs> you don't think very much about the foundations then. It's only when the storms of life start hitting you, when you start going through some trials, when the crisis comes, our foundations are tested. And that's when it really matters. Say to yourself, that's when it really matters. It's when the crisis has come. Be sure your life is built on the solid foundation of knowing and trusting Jesus Christ. Amen? Young people, take this advice today. Hear what I'm saying. Base your life on Jesus Christ. Live your life for Jesus. The Bible says they dig deep. They lay the foundations on a rock. Who's that rock? That rock is Jesus. That's that rock that's higher than I. That rock is Jesus. The chief cornerstone. What does the Bible say about this rock? It cannot be shaken. It's like the rock of Gibraltar cannot be shaken. Do you know they say that there's some of the most roughest seas there where the Mediterranean meets the Atlantic. It's there where Gibraltar is and there the rock of Gibraltar stands. We, when we are solid in Christ, when our foundations are in Jesus Christ, we'll stand as a rock of Gibraltar. Nothing will be able to knock us over. Have you ever asked yourself why they put lighthouses onto the rocks? It's not only there to warn the ships out there that there's rocks, it's also to have a solid foundation. Those rocks have been there before that lighthouse came, and nothing's been able to move them. Who's the rock in your life? Is it Jesus Christ? Or is it self? You see, if you base your the foundations on self. If you base your foundations on another gospel, it will fail. Base it on Jesus Christ. You see, when we look at James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25, it parallels with this and it says, But be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgets what manner of man he was. Many have forgotten. That is why the Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Many have forgotten from where God has rescued you. Many have forgotten where God has brought you from. But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. God wants to bless you in every area, but be a doer of the work. It's important to listen to what God's word says. But it's much more important to obey it and to do what it says. Did you hear what I said? It is much more important to obey the word and to do what it says. We can measure the effectiveness of our Bible study time by the effects it has on our behavior and our attitude. When you read the Word of God and it begins to change you, that's when God's Word is taking, is being activated in your life. But when you hear the Word of God, you read the Word of God, and you just put it aside and it changes you nothing. 
then you were just a hearer and not a doer. We must allow God's word to affect change in our behavior, in our attitudes. Do you put into action what you have studied in the word of God? When your life is built on the word, you'll forever stand strong and tall, even in the midst of the harshest of storms. And we've been having one of the, I think, a crazy year with this pandemic. But how many of you have got stronger through this time and not weaker? Stronger in your faith. Your foundations have been solid in Jesus Christ. Friends, that's what God wants for us. We must come out of this shining. We must come out of this better. We must change our behaviors and our attitudes even when the harshest of storms hit us. Yes, the storms of life can be harsh. Yes, and they can. How many of you know that? They can be very harsh. But with God, I said with God, with God, and faith in His Word, you'll stand strong. When you've done all to stand, keep standing. I'm always reminded of that scripture. Just keep standing. Just keep standing. Don't give up. Don't let the devil knock you over. And if he does knock you over, get up. Get up at the eighth time. Get up another time. Don't stay down. There's a st statistic with MMA boxing. If a guy goes down and he stays down, he's got more of a chance of not surviving that fight. But the guy that gets up and gets out of the grapple and stands up, Normally it's the one that will win the fight. You see, friend, when you stay down, the devil will pummel you. He will destroy you. He will destroy your life. He will destroy your testimony. But when you can get up, you say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Friends, then the devil begins to run in terror. The Word of God will make you what God wants you to be without you having to struggle. Remember the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. All his disciples had to do was to follow. All Jesus wants of you is just to follow. Just obey him. And he will make your life a success. I want to tell you, friends, when you follow and obey God's Word, everything that's written in God's Word will come to pass in your life. Live by His Word. The Word will keep you in health. The Word of God will keep you in strength. The Word of God will keep you in victory. The victory is ours. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. And you'll experience unprecedented progress and peace and prosperity in your life. When we base our life upon the Word of God. Not some other theology, not some other doctrine, God's Word. God's Word is life. God's Word is life. I love God's Word. But what does the Bible say if you don't obey the word. Listen to what the Bible says, what happens when you don't obey the word. Or when you don't base your life on the word. Or don't live by the word. Luke chapter 6 verse 46 says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the things which I say? Verse 49 says, But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth or on the sand without a foundation against which the streams beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great the Bible says they heard but they did nothing about it like building a house on sand 
No sure foundations, nothing strong. The foundations just fizzle away. And when the storms of life come and beat against your house, it falls. Why would people, listen to this, why would people build a house without a foundation? Perhaps to save time. Save time and avoid the hard work. You know, we live in a society and in an age where people love everything instant. Perhaps to save time and to avoid the hard work of preparing a stone solid foundation. Possibly because the, the waterfront's uh, scenery is more attractive or because beach houses have higher social status than cliff houses. Can you see how some people are living today? They only want to please their friends. They only want to, they've got so much peer pressure. Perhaps because they want to join their friends who have already settled in sandy areas. Hey, it's never rained here. Just put up your house over there, bro. We're going to meet on the beach for some sundowners. Save some time. You don't have to put, this, put the place up. Maybe because they have not heard about the violent storms coming. Maybe they didn't pick this up and hear what is about to come. Or because they have discounted the reports. No, man, that's for more than 2,000 years ago. Friends, I want you to tell you today that this is more current than this morning's tribune. This is more up to date with what's going on on all of the various platforms. This is so up to date, it's telling us exactly what's happening now. But many would like to try and discount the reports. Or for some reason they think disaster can't happen to them. There are so many people in life that think that disaster can't hit them. How many parents I have sat with and said, I can't believe this happened. How many people have said that, I can't believe that they retrenched me. I was their biggest asset. You see, friends, don't ever play games. Whatever their reasons, those with no foundations, are very short-sighted and they will be sorry but friends I'm here to encourage you I want to ask you this last question when you find yourself listening but not obeying what are your reasons for not obeying God's word is it because it's maybe going to challenge your life what is your reason? Each and every one of us must examine our hearts right now before we go to the table of communion. But my encouragement to you is this. Build your life with and in the Word of God. Stay in the Word for it is your sure foundation in Jesus Christ. Friends, today don't leave this place without having that full assurance don't leave this place without having your foundations solid and sure. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, let our prayer be, Father, thank you for your gracious and enlightening, inspiring word, which continually builds me up and sets me on an upward course. I am completely yielded to the ministry of the word in study and in meditation. Therefore, I walk in health and strength and victory, peace and prosperity in Jesus' name. Friends, if you do not know Jesus, 
if you're not sure of your foundations, if your foundations are not in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to challenge you right now. Don't leave this place without Jesus. Don't leave this place without first giving your life to Christ. Maybe there's somebody that's online that's watching right now. You need to give your life to Jesus. Check your life. Is your foundations in the Lord Jesus Christ or is it in some other do doctrine or in some other theology? Doctrine and theology will not get you to heaven. A relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. Are your foundations in Jesus? I challenge you right now, friends. With every head bowed, every eye closed, have you come to that place in your spiritual life that if you had to die today, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? And suppose you had to die and you had to stand before Almighty God and hear you ask you, why should I allow you into my heaven? What would you say? Where do you stand right now? If the engineer of life had to come and ex examine your building, would he find your foundations? Solid on the rock Christ Jesus. See, friends, if you had to stand before Almighty God and He had to ask you, why should I allow you into my heaven? What would you say? Would you say, I've been a good person. I'm not a bad person. I don't do all of these wicked things. But He's going to ask you, what did you do with Jesus? Have you accepted Him? Have you confessed your sin? The Bible says if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin. Won't you do it today and give your life to Christ? Won't you surrender to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. I am a sinner. I can't save myself. I need you, Lord Jesus. If that is you, won't you slip up your hand and say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to know my foundations are right. I see that hand. Is there anybody else here in the auditorium, those that are online? Make this decision right now. If there's somebody here that needs to pray, I see this hand down here, but is there anybody else that wants to pray? Slip your hand up right now. I want to pray for you. Don't leave this place. I see that hand over there. Praise the Lord. Can we pray with those that have put up their hands? I see that hand. Don't leave this place without Jesus. Friends, we're living in the last of the last days. Coming back for a church with solid foundations, a church without spot or blemish. Can we stand together in reverence for God as we pray this prayer together? Those that have put up their hands also just stand with us. Everyone, everyone that stand. I want you to keep your eyes closed. I want you to just lift your hand to heaven. And let each and every one of us examine our hearts. Because we're going to the table of the Lord right now. And friends, my Bible is very clear. That this table is the table of forgiveness. This is the table of the Lord. This is not the table of the full gospel church. The table where we must examine, we must... Remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died for us. He shed his precious blood for us. His body was broken for us. Jesus hung in open shame on that cross of Calvary because he loves us. But you know, friends, the table is for the born-again believer. And so today, let us say, that Lord, cleanse my heart. Maybe you've had bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment in your heart. Confess it before the Lord right now. The Bible says if you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin. So that means every one of us, not one of us is righteous, every one of us must pray this prayer together. And I want you to pray it out loud. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now in the mighty name of Jesus. I confess I am a sinner. I can't save myself. I need you, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to remove my sin from me as far as the east is from the west. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be the Lord of my life. 
take my name out of the book of judgment and write my name in the land book of life. I give you my heart and my life today. Now I want us to pray this prayer. My Bible tells me that you are born again. But maybe you're standing here and you've got things in your heart towards others. And you want him to partake of communion this morning. Don't leave this place without first making it right. Dear friends, no amount of, can't say, well, it's a big sin or a small sin. Sin is sin. Sin is what separates us from God. And if you've got resentment or bitterness, it can result in becoming hatred. Choose today, I'm going to forgive that one that's hurt me. I'm going to forgive that one that has uh, spoken against me or offended me. Choose today to do it. Can I lead you in a prayer in doing that before we partake? Say, dear Heavenly Father, I choose today to forgive those that have offended me. As you forgave on the cross, I choose today to forgive those that have hurt me, spoken words against me. I choose today to forgive them. And as I forgive, I ask you to forgive me. And I receive that forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you. If I can ask if you can take your emblems, take the bread, out of its sealed packet. So thankful to the Lord that we are able to partake of communion together. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I want you to take the bread. I want you to break the bread. Give thanks to the Lord. And partake in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Amen.
seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Matthew 7, 7, it says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeketh findeth, to him that knocketh will be opened. So we need to ask, we need to seek, and we need to knock. Um, the, the young, it says in Psalms 34, 10, the young lions do not lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. If you seek the Lord, you're not going to, if you seek the Lord, you're not going to lack any good thing. Deuteronomy 28, 8, the Lord will command blessing upon you in your barns and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the land that the Lord gives you. The Lord will command. The Lord commands a blessing on you. The Lord commands it. God's commanded. Point to Jesus. Say, God's commanded a blessing on me. Amen. Exodus 4, 2 says, And the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? He's asking Moses, What's in your hand? Moses had nothing. And he said, Only a staff. And today we say, What's in our hand? I've only got my little staff. Sometimes it seems so little, but you know what? With that staff, he opened the Red Sea and led the people through the wilderness. And as we obey God with what we've got in our hand, you know what God's going to grow. But God's going to do amazing things in your life as you walk in obedience to God. And also, what have you got in your hand? Because we've got this, like we call our offering our seed, right? No seed is ever going to grow in your hand. You've got to put it in the ground first. And as we obey God with our seed, it's going to grow. Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the same measure that you give, you will get back. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you today in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. And Father, thank you that we have the privilege once again of sowing seed, Father God. Thank you that we can put it into your anointing, into the things of the kingdom. And Father God, thank you that we're not going to lack, but Father God, you're just going to. Bless your people in such a mighty way. We just thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen.
But uh, maybe there's somebody online that's having an anniversary. We pray for God's richest blessings. For birthdays, we've got blessings. Uh, yes, praise the Lord. Your anniversary, your, your birthday is on the second. Amen. Blessing. And then on the third also, we've got uh, Kotwani Kele. Then on the fourth, we've got Ranjani. Ranjani Governor's birthday on the fourth. Hey, it's Ashley's birthday, guys. When you go outside, it's Ashley's birthday on the fourth. We'll just give him a big praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He was, he's so excited. Ashley, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, eh? <laughs> Ashley's birthday on the fourth. Then it's Brenda Van Bake's birthday on the sixth. And Beatrice Kamanga. On the, also on the 6th, then uh, Lulama's birthday is on the 7th, Kessie's birthday is on the 8th, that's on Sunday, and also in Bali, in Bengal, uh, on, the, on the 8th. So we pray for those that are having birthdays, and also for those that are having anniversaries, and friends also just keep Susan in prayer for that healing in her body, and uh, also we just want to just offer our condolences, I just remembered now, over and above uh, Peter Colby, it was also Ellen Williams, uh, her son, Matthew. Uh, he w they were coming in just before the lockdown. They were coming, they used to sit in the back row. They, um, they were here for many years before we even came to the church. They stayed across here, they were sweet. Then they left the area, and then they came back just before lockdown, and uh, Matthew passed away on Friday. And uh, so we just want to just keep, I, I have contacted Ellen and just... Uh, prayed with her and encouraged her, and uh, I know that God's going to just be a blessing uh, in that life. And I know that uh, Matthew is with the Lord, and he, know, he knew Jesus, and he loved the Lord, and he was able to go to be with the Lord, amen. He suffered long, long, long time, and uh, we know that God's peace is upon him, and also his family now. So friends... Let us just pray for those that are having birthdays, anniversaries, and also for those. Maybe there's others that can lead in prayer. We're going to bring that before the Lord right now. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we, Lord, we thank the Lord of Ellen. We pray, Father God, that, Lord, that as we have sent those prayers out to her, I know, Lord God, that, Lord, that your hand is upon her. Lord, I know, Father God, that you comfort her. Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, you're the only one that can fill that gap. I pray, Lord God, that we know, Lord God, that too is in your hands and in your arms right now. I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, that your peace will come upon Ellen Williams and her family. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Susan, Lord, touch her right now in the name of Jesus. We pray right now for Peter Colby and his family. Just comfort them through this time, Lord God. Lord, we just pray, Lord God, right now, Father, for anyone that's not well, that, Lord, that you touch them and heal them. Lord, that those that are, are not well there on the line, Lord God, just let them lay hands on that part of their body. I thank you, Lord God, that you send your word and touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that by your stripes they are healed. Father, we just bring blessing and uh, and Lord, Lord God, we bring Rajani, Lord God, we bring Ashley and Brenda and Beatrice, uh, Lulama and Kesi and Bali before you right now, happy birthdays this coming week. I pray that your blessing will be upon them, those that are online that we don't even know about. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you'll bless them on their birthday. Give them the desires of their heart, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Those that are having anniversaries that we don't even know about, I ask you, Lord God, right now, just meet them, be with them, comfort them, let them have a wonderful time together, I pray, Lord God, the blessings to flow over their lives, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now friends, quickly for the announcements, those that are online also listen for the announcements. Um, this evening, 5 p.m., it's the Live at 5, Spiritual Inspiration. It's going to be an exciting time. Come and join us. If you can come in the area, come through to the church. Then also meet us online if you're not able to be here for the service here at the, at the auditorium. So it's going to be exciting. 5 p.m., we're going to have a wonderful time. Praise and worship and also a powerful word. Then after the service this morning, uh, online will be the Sunday School Animation and also the Memory Verse. And uh, let that also be such a blessing to the young 
young ones of the church. We just don't want ever anybody to be left out. We want everyone to be a blessed, blessed by the word of the Lord. Tuesday at 2.45, I will be once again preaching a powerful message of faith. Jesus saves, heals, and delivers on the Highway Radio 101.5 at 2.45. Amen? It's a powerful one coming up. Don't forget to listen. Invite others to listen with you. 6 p.m. on Tuesday is the Bible study and prayer meeting, the hour of power and prayer. And we are speaking on the end time series. And I want you to encourage you to be here, be part of it, tune in, be involved in this end time uh, series. It's very important. We need to know what's going on. Because, friends, how many of you know we're actually living in the end times right now? We are right here at the, at the cusp of it. We're right here. So let's make sure that we understand what the Word of God is saying and know what God is, is, is revealing to us. Then on Sunday coming, 8.30, a powerful, life-changing worship and word. And uh, remember, the communion will then be in the evening next week. So at 5 p.m. at the Alive at 5, the spiritual inspiration will be the communion. But I want to encourage you, don't miss out on the services. Be involved in the services. Come and be blessed. I really want to say thank you to each one that comes and attends the services. Those that are attending online, may the Lord richly bless you. But thank the Lord for each one that comes and be part of the work that God has called us to do. Friends, we can share, comment, and do all of these things, but let's send, get on your contact list. Get, when you get home, go and send this through to your contact. Share it with people. Remember, friends, sharing is caring. Tag someone. Invite them. What's that other thing called? It's a cheer party. What is it? Oh, watch party. That's it. Watch party. Do a watch party. Get somebody to, to watch with you. And just be a blessing. And you know, friends, you know people all around the world. Send these messages out. Also, don't forget to go and visit uh, the preacher's diary. Uh, and you'll be able to go onto that Facebook page and then you'll be able to see what happened in the studio yesterday um, as we, we shared the testimony and just had such wonderful blessings. I just want to say thank you to Joshua and Hunter and Isaac and Lorna for being there with me. They were my big support. It was uh, a scary friends. It's not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa, man. But praise God, God is good, eh? And so uh, it's exciting. It's uh, really awesome what God is doing. So I want to invite the Lord to come and to hear the word of the Lord. Let's stand together as we close off the service. Love you guys. Don't forget, those on this side of the aisle will go through that door. And those that are on this side will go through the, the front door. God bless you guys. Love you guys so much. And I really appreciate you all coming for the service this morning. Come and, go, come and join us again this afternoon. It's going to be an awesome time. Love you guys. God bless. Did you were you blessed? Can we give the Lord a praise offering? Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. Always all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you guys. God bless you. Thanks, we I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus that you will not sit in the seat of the scroll of law, but your delight will be in the law of the Lord. And in this law you will meditate on the day and night. And I declare over your life that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. You will produce fruit. Savior and my friend, the 
beginning and the end Walk beside me, my Lord, I pray Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on To that home you have prepared beyond the sun I will follow you today You're the truth, the life, the way Walk beside me, oh Lord, I pray Walk beside me, my Lord, I pray Give me strength to follow you each day You're my saviour and my friend The beginning and the end Walk beside me, oh Lord, I pray Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on To that home you have prepared beyond the sun I will follow you today You're the truth, the life, the way Walk beside me, oh Lord, I pray Lord, I pray